Hey guys, it's Josh Wakem here with another saxophone lesson for you today. Following on from last week's video, today we're going to do a deep dive into breathing, covering why we want to breathe correctly on the saxophone, how we breathe correctly, and a few exercises we can do to help us out with this. And then, like last time, there's a cheeky little tip right at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Now, breathing correctly on the saxophone is quite a tricky thing to do, especially as a beginner, but even some intermediate and advanced players still occasionally struggle with this. So I'm going to do my best to explain it as clearly and simply as I can, but don't worry if you find it difficult. It does take most people a little bit of time just to get used to it. Proper breathing on the saxophone is sometimes called diaphragm breathing or having good breath support, and essentially it creates this solid airstream coming out of our mouth into the instrument without really any fluctuations, which means that our sound is going to be nice and big and our intonation or our tuning is going to be a lot better, especially in those high notes. If we don't do this, as we get higher we're more likely to tense up and bite down with our embouchure, which is going to make our sound even thinner and also risk us going really sharp in those high notes. <laughs> As well as this, it gives us so much more control over our dynamics or how loudly we play. So our loud volumes are less likely to get overblown, and we're going to be able to get so much quieter with our quiets, expanding our dynamic range, and also get, making it a bit easier for us to practice quietly if that's something we need to do. Now in day-to-day -day life, if we're taking a big breath in, it's often like we're trying to squeeze into a narrow gap. So our stomach's going to come in and our shoulders are going to come up. And this means we're only using a tiny part of our lungs, right? Only the very top of our lungs. And we don't really have much control over that as we breathe out. This is really easy to spot because of that shoulder rise. Now instead, if when we breathe in, we make sure our stomach comes out and our shoulders stay nice and flat, then we're breathing from the very bottom of our lungs. And that's going to not only fill up our lungs more efficiently, it's also going to give us a lot more control over it because we can use our diaphragm, a muscle right under our lungs, to really squeeze that air out of us nice and steadily as we breathe out, which we'll come to a bit later on. So let's give this a try. Place one hand on your stomach and try and breathe in while pushing that hand out with your stomach muscles. Make sure when you're doing this your shoulders are staying down and then you really know you're breathing correctly. Now you want to keep practicing this until it's really comfy and kind of a natural thing to do. Now luckily this is a really easy thing to practice because we can do it wherever we are. If we're sat in front of the TV, we can do it. If we're on the bus on the way to work, we can do it. If we're just wandering down the street, we can be thinking about this. Also the added bonus that breathing like this is quite just a calming, meditative thing to do. So if you get used to this and it becomes your natural way of breathing, not only are you going to have a far better saxophone sound, you're also going to pr live a pretty chill life. Now if you're finding this really difficult and you're really struggling with it, what I'd recommend doing is lying down on a hard surface, like the floor or something like that. Because when we lie down, gravity aligns all of our organs in such a way that we're almost forced to breathe like this. So if you lie down, just breathe naturally, you'll almost definitely find that your stomach is coming up as you breathe in, going down as you breathe out. Just get used to that sensation and then stand up and give it a try. So now that we've got the correct way of breathing in, we need to make sure we have the correct way of breathing out through the instrument to get this nice big sound. Now I'm not going to go too much into the scientific side of things with you know, the diaphragm muscle and how it works, but essentially when we're breathing out, make sure we're tensing our abdominal muscles because that helps us control that diaphragm muscle, which means we can breathe out in a far more regular, consistent fashion. So let's give that a try. We're going to breathe in for a count of four and then try and breathe out for a count of eight, making sure we're tensing our abdominal muscles. And once you've got that comfortable, all you need to do is do that through the saxophone while making sure you've got your embouchure and you're going to get this big sound that's in tune across all the registers. But obviously doing it on the saxophone might be a little bit trickier, mainly because when we're playing we have a limited amount of time to breathe in. So a really good exercise to get used to this is putting on a metronome at a medium speed, say around 60 BPM, and giving yourself four beats to get that breath in, and then play a long note for as long as you can, or if you push for time, maybe eight beats. And once that's comfortable, keep the metronome at the same speed, but instead only give yourself two beats to breathe in. Then once that's comfy, one beat, and then maybe try and get that breath in between two beats. And then this is a lot more like how it's going to be when we're actually playing a piece of music, right? <laughs>
now we've covered why we want to breathe like this, how we breathe in, and how we breathe out to get this good in-tune sound across all the registers. So if you have found this useful, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel, it'd really help me out. But I did promise you a bonus tip for getting this far through the video. And this is all about where we breathe when we're playing music. Now when we're first starting, it's gonna be a little bit tricky and we might rely on the little commas we can sometimes see at the end of a bar or end of a line, because they tell us where to breathe. But as we get further and further in on our musical journey, these commas often stop appearing in pieces of music. And obviously we can breathe in the rest, right, when we've got a bit of silence but we might need to fit in a few other breaths throughout the piece so we can get through without passing out. And I'd really recommend never pass out when you're playing. Ever. Now luckily this isn't as complicated as it might first seem. It's kind of the same as speech, right? When we're talking, we take a breath at the end of a sentence. We get our idea across, take a breath, move on to the next thing. And it's kind of the same in music, but rather than sentences, it's our phrases. We play one phrase, take a breath, move on to the next phrase. Now, if you're not sure where the phrases are, maybe it's a brand new piece of music you've picked up, right? You're looking at the sheet music, you can't immediately see the phrases. Try and sing the piece. Because if we sing it, we're naturally gonna take a breath at the end of a phrase. And then we can just move that breathing across to playing the saxophone. And it's gonna give the music so much more life straight away, just by adding in these tiny breaths. And even if we don't need them, Maybe we can play a few more phrases in one go, especially as our lungs develop. If we still take these breaths, we're still gonna give the music that life. So here's a quick rendition of When the Saints Go Marching In, and I'm gonna deliberately breathe at the end of every single phrase, even though I might not need to. And hopefully you'll hear how it separates each phrase into its own individual thing, which really brings the music to life a lot more. <laughs> I hope all these tips have helped you out and really helped you get your breathing together on the saxophone. If they have, or if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. But good luck with it, and I'll see you next time.